كل سنه وانتم طيبين زي ما احنا عارفين كلنا اني we're trying to take different commandments to live with um, as we all know we try to live and abide by the word of God and the theme of this year's uh, Nahda for St. Mary is the commandments that are more direct the ones that say do the following or do not do the following and thank God through God's grace tonight we are blessed to have our very dear father Father Anthony Andrews Abuna serves in uh, the Coptic Orthodox Church of Virgin Mary and San Bachomius in Stony Point in upstate New York so Abuna took uh, a big drive especially coming down south on, on his way here uh, he had the rush hour um, also through God's grace tonight Abuna will be uh, talking um, directly uh, to the youth regarding the commandment that Saint Paul gave to his disciple Saint Timothy and told him let no one despise your youth but and then he gave him other tips as uh, we will hear it from Abuna so again we are very thankful and very uh, pleased to have the blessing of Abuna Anthony uh, with us tonight Name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. It's really a blessing, a great uh, pleasure, uh, honor to be among you here uh, for the St. Mary's Revival. Abuna always invites me. I'm so happy to take that blessing. Uh, I'm happy that and blessed to have the opportunity to prepare a word for myself. Actually, every time I get invited to do that, I, I don't really want to do it. I want to avoid it, I want to get away from it, but uh, that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Uh, the idea of wanting to escape, the idea of wanting to get out of things, especially when you're called or invited to something, and you may feel a desire to do it, you may feel a passion to do it, and you feel maybe at times you're hoping for it, but then at other times you don't really want it, and you're like in this uh, dilemma. Uh, actually, I'm having this feeling uh, at the moment right now because um, September is the mark of the new school year. And I start school every September because I teach at a university. I've been teaching in a university for eight years now. And it's not something I applied to. It's not something I wanted to do. It's not something uh, I thought I could ever do. But actually, I'm, uh, to be honest with you, I'm dreading it. But then I was uh, trying to re-energize uh, myself and revive myself, so I went back to the old things that used to give me the inspiration. And there's this wonderful book that I read years ago that I uh, drew some inspiration from uh, to talk about this verse, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and purity. You may have thought of one is going to come and he's going to talk to us about these six things. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, that's not what I'm going to talk to you about. I just want to say the word example, the word example triggered in me the question of what does it mean to be an example? What does it mean to be an example? And it means to be a teacher. To be an example means to be a teacher and the book that I talked I'm talking to you about is a book called the courage to teach it's called the courage to teach and the courage of the uh, to teach it's a book about education it's a book about actually going into the classroom and having a subject and having a student having students and going 
week in and week out and delivering lectures, having assignments, doing group work, uh, giving, um, doing a lab, doing experiments, whatever the method or the technique may be, that's what's involved in teaching. But the word courage, the word courage is so important here because to be a teacher, you have to be courageous. You have to be brave. To be an example, you have to be brave. You have to be courageous. And it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing because the bottom line, the bottom line to be a great teacher, an excellent teacher, is to, to be humble. Because the moment you think that you've acquired something on your own, you're a fool. You've lost all the discipleship, all the mentorship. All your teachers would look at you and say you failed. Why? Because you're not humble. And I want to say something about this because uh, I was watching uh, also uh, a very old show. Uh, you remember Family Matters? Family Matters? Family Matters, very old show when, when TV was good. And there was, you know, the basic structure of a family, right? The, the, the only structure of a family. And it's a father, a mother, and children. Uh, his name is uh, Carl and Harriet. These are the parents, and they have a son, Eddie. There was a scene or an episode of how Eddie got his report card. And Eddie, to his surprise and his shock, and his whole family's surprise and shock, he got straight A's. He got straight A's, and his parents were shocked. He was shocked. His siblings were shocked because he's not an A student, okay? And so his dad was celebrating. His mom was celebrating. They were so proud of him. And they were like, you're doing good. Uh, you're going to go to a great college one day. And then there was a scene that I really loved because it captured something that's in all of us. The moment he believed, the moment he believed that he was an A student because he actually was surprised to learn that he's an A student. You see him in a scene studying. Like he has the books out, he's reading, he's writing. You'll never see him do that again. But the time he believed, and it was confirmed, his evaluation said A, he believed he was an A. Now you may feel like this is so uh, strange, right? right? Why, why would we, why is our psychology like that? Like do we need to be lied to so that we could succeed? Do we need to be told, good boy, good girl, you're doing good? And you know when we like, we always say you're doing good and maybe we're not doing that good and we feel like maybe we're getting encouraged but we really don't feel that good and we doubt ourselves? That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the idea of taking heart, to take heart, to teach and to be, I'm going to come back to this story because it's important to apply it in a real life um, context because it's our life really this idea to believe even though you are not something is very important because we have to take heart to give heart you have to be passionate in order to give passion it's not being a hypocrite and it's not being a liar I remember I struggled with this when I was young I was uh, a Sunday school teacher like many of us are in the Coptic Orthodox Church growing up. We go to pre-servants. We, we then uh, take on a class and then we prepare lessons and all that. It was really troubling me one time where I had a lesson that I had to give. And I went to my father of confession. And I told him, Abuna, I don't want to give the lesson. He said, why? I said to him, because I'm not doing this. I prepared a lesson, but I'm not doing it. He said, my son, give the lesson. I said, why? He said, because you're struggling and you're humble about it, if you are saying, I'll give the lesson, you know, and who cares, you know, I got this. Uh, I'm good. I'm a good speaker. It uh, doesn't matter if I'm living this or not. I'm just going to perform. I'm just going to act. Because a lot of good teachers perform and act, right? But he said to me, no. You, because you're struggling, maybe, God willing, you could live this lesson in the future. Because you feel like that, that's everything. So go ahead and do it. Because the idea to not do something good because you failed is the whole trap of not having courage, not being brave, and then ultimately not being an example. 
So we have to be examples. We have to be courageous. We have to have a courage to do that. Right? So teaching and to be an example, it's the most thrilling thing. It's the most exciting thing. But it's the most terrifying thing. It's the most scary thing. Both feelings need to exist. You can't just be thrilled and exhilarated all the time to be in your place or in your position. What you do must terrify you and it must exhilarate you. It has to be both. It's the same coin but different sides. It's a holy tension. It's a tension that keeps you accountable in front of God and in front of people that you serve. We have to have trust, right? If I was hiring someone or if I work for someone, the whole thing is predicated on trust. If I'm supposed to do something and my team or my boss or anyone that I'm working with doesn't trust me or doesn't believe me, it destroys the whole thing. So we have to be able uh, to fight through discouragement, right? A lot of times we get beat down and there's so much things against us that, for example, I'll share like a real story. And this was an amazing uh, example for me because I, I'm sensitive about certain things sometimes. So one day I'm, I'm teaching at the university and I missed an email from one of the administrators. So he, he, he saw me in the hallway. He said, you're not good at answering emails. What is this? And he, he gave me, a, he rebuked me. So then I'm like, ah, oh, why am I doing this? What, what's the, I, like, you know, I'm not good at this. You know, I'm not, I'm not good at this. So then I was down a little. And then the same day, I'm walking to my car after I taught uh, that day. And then I had a student say, Father, Father, I want to tell you something. I said, sure. He said, do you remember me? I was like, yes, I remember you. He said, yeah, you know, we, you were my, you were my uh, teacher years ago. And I wanted to remind you of our, you know, our, our experience. I said, sure, can you remind me? He said, yeah, I was not interested in you or your class or anything you said. And I even told you in my, my bio sheet, because I, I give a bio sheet in the beginning of the semester, and I say, why are you taking this class? And he said clearly, explicitly, I'm an atheist. I have no interest in anything here. I'm just here to get an A. I heard you were easy. Done. He gave me the paper, right? So then I said, yeah, I remember you. And then I said, I, I think you did very well too because you didn't believe anything, but you answered everything right. He had rote memory. This guy could look at a book, scan it, and, and regurgitate it. And, and amazing, talented, very talented. So he got an A. He's not getting an A because he, he's a believer, right? He's like, I want to tell you something though. I said, sure. He said, you were a link, one link in a long chain that connected me to Christ. So I said, this is why I teach. It reaffirmed why I do what I do. Sometimes we get punched left and right by things that try to discourage you and take you away from the original true love and passion you have for what you do. But then God sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, he gives you like a little just a little gift just says, I'll show you something, but you're not going to see this a lot. That held me up for like five years. Now I'm at this point again. I'm praying for something else to happen. But what's the point? The point is we are not courageous. We are not brave. We're constantly reminded of our flaws, our weaknesses, our inability. But that's important because it's, it terrifies us that we're not competent. We're not good enough. We're not like our teachers. We're not humble. We're not so many things. So the best thing is to develop an awareness of your inner landscape, okay? Right? The verse is, let no one despise your youth, but be an example. We're just talking about how could I even become an example before I could teach one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not even going to talk about those six things. I'm just going to say, let's get the foundation right. Let's just be an example. And then what God gives you to teach, he'll give you to teach. I want to say something about subjects. You don't choose the subject. The subject chooses you. Now, what do I mean by that? When you talk to any teacher, most of them didn't get trained to teach. Did you know that? Most of them were interested in a subject, but really there was a chemistry, not, not the subject chemistry, but chemistry 
that they had or a, a, a feeling they developed or a passion they developed with the subject and it kind of, they got, they got married, right? They got married. And because they got married, it produced the fruit of teaching. It gave birth to education. We need to do religious reform in our churches. This is not a new thing. I know this word is a scary word, reform. No, religious reform and educational reform, they're important. And actually, if you look at our history in the church, there are so many talented fathers throughout the years that God gifted the church for this very purpose. And I could go through a list of them. And to be quite honest, many of them were very young, very young. And it's a reminder for us that we should be, you know, not discouraged or despised. Remember what the Lord Jesus Christ said when he was teaching in the temple at 12 years old and his mother, St. Mary, whom we are celebrating these days. You know what she said to him? Where were you? Right? It sounds a little discouraging, right? Uh, I mean, this is the mother of God. She almost rebuked him. Where were you? What are you doing? He's 12 years old. What could he be doing? Like, what does a 12-year-old do? Play, you know, have fun. That's normal. But what was he doing? He was teaching. And the, the, the elders were astonished at his teaching. And you know, we all know the verse. It said, in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. And he said to them, Why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Did you not know that this is what I'm here for? So the question is, like, what am I here for? Like, why are you here? Why am I here? Why are you a parent? Why are you a student in school? Why are we in this business of education? Why do we even bother? Why do we come to church? Why do we, you know, have people instructing us, talking to us, coaching us, mentoring us? Because everybody is a teacher. Everybody has the responsibility to teach. All of us need to understand that it's not just to be like, pushing it off on someone else. Actually, when you look at religious education, there's a very important term. You know what the term is? Socialization. They call it that. What does socialization mean? Socialization in a very simple way is it takes a village to raise a child. That's the basic definition, right? So we do this subconsciously. We don't realize it, but it's true. We have a community. We have the church, we have our parents, we have our teachers in school, we have our friends. Socialization is this idea that all these people have a role in educating me. Did you know that human beings cannot even walk without seeing it as an example in front of them? There's case studies with anthropologists where they studied some cases of human beings called feral children. Have you heard of this? What is a feral child? You know what a feral cat is? A feral cat is a stray cat. It's a stray cat. So what I'm saying is there are kids that are stray kids. Stray kids meaning they were raised by the wolves, literally. literally. They di didn't even see a human being once in their life, okay? You might be shocked. This is true. There, there are people that they found in history like this. And sometimes they're with dogs or cats or some animals and they, they communicate. And they, that's all they know. And did you know that they don't walk? They're on all four. Their hands are on the ground, their knees are on the ground. A human being. So a human being doesn't even know from a child how to stand up unless it's modeled to them. Just to stand up. Just to walk on two feet. Something so simple. So you might be like, what am I, what's the big deal? If I say this, or I do this, or I look that way, or I say this word, I'm saying just to stand up is, is learned by a model and an example. So this is serious. This is not like a small thing. Like, it's a very serious thing to be in a position to lead, or to teach, or to be an example. Something I notice all the time as an educator, 
Sometimes I have students, they're good at getting the answers right. And they get straight A's. Then you talk to them and they don't know anything. In Arabic, Hafiz bas mishfahim. Mishfahim, right? Hafiz bas mishfahim. I'm not even saying it right because my Arabic is bad. I, you know, you memorize everything, but you don't understand anything, right? I, I'm afraid sometimes we're like that. Can I be honest why I'm saying that? Because I think we're very good at, like, just copying. I don't think we're good at being original, but in a way where it's like I'm being honest with what God is helping me try to do in my life. So, teaching is something that comes from within you, right? You can't be isolated. You can't be alone. And I want to say, you teach what you are. You teach what you are. You are an example, and whatever is inside of you, teaching is the mirror of the soul. So, even your mannerisms, even your body language, your expressions, the, your rhetoric, the voice fluctuation, that's not just a show. That's actually a glimpse of your soul. It's like what's inside of you is actually being poured and offered into the people. Your passion for teaching is everything. To give Christ as the example is everything. But let me say something that I started with. The enemy is everywhere. The discouragement is everywhere. There is no shortage of any opposition against this. Right? So there's a lot of bad days. There's a lot of bad days at work, a lot of bad days at home, a lot of bad days as being a priest, a lot of bad days of doing whatever you do. But one thing you have to remember is you have to continue, regardless of the bad days, to be an example. Do you know how hard that is? Especially when you feel hypocritical, when you feel weak, when you feel unworthy, when you feel like, I have nothing to give. You are in a good position to give. Why? Because you are giving out of a true scarcity that God needs to bless. You're not giving out of an abundance. If you think people are going to benefit from you because you're going to just spill wisdom and drop knowledge... And all this stuff, you'll never succeed. Actually, there's two approaches in education. And just think with me about the way of Christ here. There's an approach that says the subject is up here. It's up here. It's high, right? So you have to come up, right? You have to, like, elevate yourself. Here's a thousand pages. Read this. Then you can talk to me. Okay, right? That's the idea. Or there's the idea of the teacher coming down to the student. Doesn't that sound familiar? Who did that? The Lord Jesus Christ. Who did he do that with? Countless people. Which one is a classic example of him going down? Samaritan woman. He went so, he went, he went down to like, like literally wants to win her. Like wants to, wants, he wants her to get on his back and he'll lift her up. He'll just, he'll, he'll descend, he'll go down, he'll be humble so that he can find someone where they are and lift them up out of the pit. This is, this is the hero. This is the hero. This is the savior of the world. You know, um, in philosophy, there's the allegory of the cave. I love this one. The allegory of the cave. What is the allegory of the cave? You have a cave, Right? And in the cave, there is shadows on a wall. The shadows on the wall are produced by a fire. The people looking at the shadows at, on the wall, they can't see the fire. For some reason, they can't see it. All they see is a projection of images moving on the wall of the cave. They don't ever see the fire. Some of them graduate and they get to see the fire. So they're looking at the, the group in the front and they like are saying, these people don't even know that there's something called a flame. Okay? Then 
there's a group that supersedes that and they make it outside of the cave. Okay? And those that make it outside of the cave, think about it. It's terrifying. Why? Because they know people, their whole existence is just this. And that they're missing out on what? All of this. Reality. Knowledge. Knowledge. Awareness. Truth. What is their duty now? Is their duty to say, I'm free. Let me go run and live my life. Or is there a responsibility to try to go back into the cave and go down to people on their level and try to explain to them, these are cheap imitations of what is real and what is true. That's the, that's the hero. That's the leader. That's the teacher. That's the father. That's what God would do. So we're so afraid because it's such a big responsibility. It's such a big responsibility. And we pray to God to help us know ourselves. We have to know ourselves and our limits. There's three things when it comes to being an example, right? To be an example is what we're talking about. To be an example is to be a teacher. To be an example, you have to have three parts. You cannot have just one of the three. You have to have all three. You have to have the intellect. A lot of us think that education is just information. No, that's one part of it. One part of it is information, intellect. The second part of it is emotion. You have to be, as an example, you have to be emotional about what you're teaching. You have to show feeling. How could you be successful if you're trying to get a point across or educate or teach or be an example and you, have, you could care less? You have no emotion about it. So you have to have the intellect, you have to have the emotion, and then number three, you have to have the spirit, the spiritual aspect. What's the spiritual aspect? It's the, the, the thing that's meta, the thing that is beyond, the thing that is not just my mind and my heart, but the thing that is what I just said is the reality. There's something more real than this pulpit. Do you think this is the pulpit? There was a pulpit that existed before. There's a more real thing than this pulpit here. This is not the pulpit. There was many pulpits that were designed. The question is, which one was the first one? First one was the one that was in God's mind. Right? That's what it is. That's the spiritual. That's the meta. That's the beyond. That's beyond me. I can't explain that to you. That's the spiritual realm. So we need to be aware that teaching and learning and to be an example and to be a student, to be a disciple, to be mafetis, that's what we say, that the Lord had disciples. To be a disciple, to have a mentor, to have someone that is teaching you, not because this is the duty, but that goes the extra mile. You know, it's like if someone comes to you and says, are you going to give the lesson this week? You say, yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one, two, three, four. Glory be to God forever, amen. Have a nice day. I'll see you next week. But what if a kid comes up to you after and says, can I talk to you? I have a question. How generous are you with your time? Do you give that child everything? Or are you like, oh, that's enough for you. Like, my teachers, they tortured me. My teachers, they made me work so hard. No, no, you'll learn when you're 50. You can't know this now. But a generous, freely receiving, freely giving would sit with this child and talk to him as if he were an adult. Literally talk to him things beyond his age. Why? Because you never underestimate anybody. You always treat them with the dignity that they deserve. And that generosity will inspire that child for their whole life. They won't even remember what you said to them that day. They'll remember how you made them feel because you spent four hours with them when they only asked one question. And you do it every time, not just once. I think this is our encounter with the true teacher. The true teacher is the Lord Jesus Christ. You think the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come to you in the Bible or in your prayer and say, I have five minutes for you? Go. No. It's endless. You have an opportunity to sit at the feet of the Lord and just drink from the fountain all day. That's the spiritual life. Just because you have a PhD, just because you studied something to the max, doesn't mean 
you know what you're doing. Just because you have all the techniques and all the methods doesn't know, mean you know what you're doing. Just because you evaluate people and give them grades at the end of the semester doesn't mean you are powerful. Doesn't mean any of that. It's all just a tool to create the craft and the art of being an example. It's art. You know, when we were in uh, the, the seminary, they called the course sometimes not pastoral care. They'd call it like pastoral art. It's like a craft. It's something you practice. It's something you try to like, it's like a dance. It has beauty to it. And when you, when you do that, you see your brokenness. You see your flaws. You know where you came from. You know that there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of issues with your identity, the integrity you're, you have, all this. So whenever you have a chance to be an example, don't say no. Don't say, I can't. You must be an example. You have to, even if you don't do what you're supposed to do. Can you imagine someone asking you a, a sincere question? And in theory, this is the answer. But you tell them something too personal. Now you've scandalized the person, right? So you say to the child, yeah, this is what you should do, but this is what I do. Wouldn't you scandalize the kid? Absolutely. So now you feel like you're lying, right? But you're not lying because you're struggling to protect. But a broken person will hurt someone. They will be like, no, you, you could, you know, what do you mean? Like, nobody does that. Come on, man. Right? And you, you make a whole thing and you, you scandalize a child. You have to be able to be truthful and honest with what is right. So to be a disciple, to be a student, is to spend time at the master's feet. You cannot be an example if you don't have the example, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're talking about this verse. I'm going to remind us because maybe we feel like we strayed from the, the goal here. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example. This whole time we're talking about being an example by your life, by teaching. But look, it says six things in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Basically everything. Be an example in everything, as much as you can, to the best of your ability. You know, sometimes I sit with people and they'll confess, and they'll say, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. And I say to him, and I don't know either. That which I, that which I will to do, I don't do. That which I want to do, I do. You know, all this stuff, I'm confused, I'm conflicted. It's very confusing. Why do we do anything? Our behavior, if you just sit there for a moment and say, why is my behavior like this? This, this is not who I am you're going to have a profound realization of who you really are. When you sit there and repent and you say, this is not who I am, and I'm going to change this because this is not who I am, and I'm going to keep pressing forward, and I'm still going to run the race, it empowers you to become the most powerful in God. Right? My strength is made perfect in weakness. That's what we, say, we hear in the Bible. I want to say a few more things. I know I'm, I'm dragging a little bit, but it's so important. Today, our, our youth, right? Let no one despise your youth. Can I tell you an honest thing? Don't ever push it so much to the point where you always make it seem you're the victim. We live in a day and age where everyone is a victim. Do you know what I mean? Everyone acts like a victim. Like, I was this, I was hurt, I was, uh, you know? And their, their idea of being a victim is like a, is an identity. And it's to the point where it handicaps them so bad, and they want to be treated a certain way all the time. They, wanna, they feel like a victim, so they feel like they deserve what? Special treatment. Special treatment. And that's the worst thing. Can I tell you a funny, true story? I was in a Costco because I needed to change my tires. 
So I'm standing there, obviously, as a buna, right, with my cross on. So the, the employee for Costco, he's an African-American man, okay? The customer in front of me is a Hasidic Jew, okay? I'm watching this because I'm next, you know? I just, I want to change my tires. That's all I want to do. So the employee and the customer get into like a heated thing. The, the customer wants the tires, the employee saying we don't have them, okay? So the Jewish guy goes, is it because I'm a Jew? And then he goes, is it because I'm black? And, they ca and this is happening in front of me. And they're fighting because they're both what? Victims. And I'm in my head, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I just want a tire. It has nothing to do with you being a Jew or you being black. This is the world you guys live in. You guys live in a world that teaches you, find the thing that you're persecuted in and make it a story. Make, make your whole head spin around this idea. I'm weak in this. I was persecuted in this. So I'm going to use this. And you know what it's like? As a professor, as a teacher, you hear it's a classic. Well, you know, um, I got sick. Or, you know, my dog ate my homework. Or, or you make like, you're always the victim. Something happened to you and we have to be, oh, I'm so sorry. Guys, this is the worst thing to do. Postmodernism. The time we live in. Postmodernism. Questions and challenges all authority. It says to you, why do we have to go by the rules? Why do I have to go study anything? Why do I have to learn from anyone? You know what? I don't like rules. I don't like this system. So I'll give you an example. You know, I'm going to find a hack. They call it a hack. Right? You go on YouTube. You go on YouTube. And you try to save money. It's called DIY, right? Do it yourself. Do it yourself. Why are you going to pay someone to do it? So... You don't have insurance or you don't want to spend money. So you go to DIY dentist. And some guy from nowhere, God knows where, he's sitting behind the computer all day making videos. Guys, you take some crazy glue and you take, I don't know, baking soda. And he's just showing you how to make a filling or whatever. And you put it like this and it's going to hold up for like a month. And you do it. And then you realize it hurt you more than it helped you. Because you live in a world where everyone thinks they're authority. Because the classic way is gone. Going and sitting at a teacher's feet and learning something is gone. Who cares if you go eight years and study here or do this? Everything's DIY. Do it yourself. Everyone's an influencer. You live in a postmodern age that challenges authority. You live in an age where everyone thinks they're persecuted. How are you going to make it with these two ideas? You won't. And that's my honest to God responsibility to say to you today and now. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't be generous with you in what I truly see in my life with people. There's three kinds of things when you teach. There's a teacher who's about himself. There's a teacher about his students, and there's a teacher about the subject. You need a teacher that's about all three. You need someone... And this is how you pick a father. This is how you pick a mentor. You pick a mentor with these three criteria. He truly is passionate about the subject. Truly. He doesn't care about anyone or anything. He loves the subject that he teaches or he lives. Number two, he actually cares about himself. And that might sound weird because it might sound conceited or prideful. No, he cares about himself, meaning... He, he, he's confident in what God gave him as a responsibility to do and the tools that God gave him. And number three, you have to be about the people. You have to be about the people. If you don't have these three things, then you can never find someone that's truly going to be caring for you. If you prepare, that means you care. If you don't prepare, that means you don't care. Prepare yourself. Don't get used to just repeating things. Go an extra mile all the time. If you teach something, if you live something, 
Don't say, I have this virtue, I'm good. You know, like when you put a, a recording and it just plays and it's the same thing every time. It never goes any other way. Sometimes we're a broken record like that. You have to redo your notes. Don't say, I gave this talk or this lesson a thousand times, so I'm just going to repeat it. Always go further. Always be someone that can learn from anyone. St. Anthony could learn from anybody. Could learn from anybody. This most simple person. Don't ever think that you made it and other people didn't. Don't be a cheap imitation, but be a real thing. Do you know why kids love certain teachers? Very simple. Because they are real people. Not because they are decorated with a degree or eloquent, but they actually know that someone cares about them. Show up prepared. When you show up prepared, that means you care. When you rehearse something, it means you care. When you try to present something good, it means you care. God help us in our responsibility and our duty to be examples. I want to end with this. Sometimes we are examples because of one thing, and it's the worst thing. What are people going to think? What are people going to say? And you know what? This is the issue of our generation too. Why? Because everything goes on social media. If, it, if, if it's not on social media, it didn't happen. Because our reality now is the cloud. What's wrong with you doing something and nobody knowing about it? Did you ever think of that? Why is it only existing if it's online? Why does everything have to be displayed and everyone has to give you an opinion? And you enjoy the praise of men? And then if someone criticizes you, oh, how could you criticize me? I'm the best. Let me tell you, in St. John Chrysostom, on the priesthood, you know what he tells the priest what you should be afraid of? Be afraid of the one who praises you. Don't be afraid of the one who criticizes you. It's basic. It's so basic. But our world has conditioned us to just take feedback and believe it. People say I'm good, so I'm good. People say I'm bad, no, no, they don't know what they're saying. I'm good. Be careful. Be very careful. May God help us, again, as I said many times, to be what is said here in 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example. Be an example. Be an example. To the believers, in word, in what you say, in your conduct, that's your behavior, in your love, how you show love, in your spirit, in your faith, in your purity, in everything. Be an example. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so uh, by the way, every night we have uh, someone who's working on the streaming. We be able just cut the the wazab taat kol yom, but lauha available ala the YouTube channel taat kinesa. So if anyone for some reason ma hadrsh any waza in the ayam li fatet and the ayam li gay, inshaAllah. If we enter on the channel of the Knesset, the YouTube that we are going to see all the videos, you will find it in the playlist. You will find it in the title of the Nahd 2024. You will find all the videos from the first day to the day, so that we share it with our friends who don't want to listen to the words. Everything is good.